Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. Thanks for stopping by. If you like what we make here, please do us a huge solid and hit the like and subscribe button down below. We also live stream the podcast every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central, and I host a video game live stream on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central, so come by and hang out. If you're feeling extra giving, please check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, and enjoy the show. Mind Gap Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And we're glad you're here, all of you, each and every one. Old, one new, this is your first time here, or if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad. Yeah. So glad that you found we're us. Gonna, we're just going to be here, you know, just blasting ropes. That's all we're doing here. <sighs> Highbrow all day. You know, it's funny because... Uh, Someone recently just told me that they found the podcast, and I was like, "How?" <laughs> Apparently, my daughter. It's, it's so well hidden. Yeah, my that's always my thing. It's not not thank you. Oh, great! It's always like, how did you find it, and why? Like, the, I'm so suspicious when people find it, because I forget that that's right. We put this out for anyone to listen to, but to uh, Mr. TJ, if you're listening, I want to say thank you for listening to this podcast, and I hope you enjoy it, and I'm glad you're here. I'm super stoked to have you around, Mr. TJ. Yeah. You're cool. You're a cool dude. You're an awesome drawer, and uh, I'm glad to know you. So thank you. Did you say he's an awesome jar? Drawer. Draw oh, drawer. Got it. Okay. Illustrator. That's, that's, a weird, that's a weird compliment. <laughs> You're an excellent jar. An empty container. You can things in yourself very well. Yes. You're very good. Way to keep those yeah. emotions bottled up. Thank you. you. Bottled up. <laughs> it's very great. It's very good. That's why people appreciate you. So thank you. Yeah. Keep that up. <laughs> Oh boy! Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's get through a little bit of housekeeping here. Then let's let's get on with the show. Uh, first things first. Uh, if you don't already know, um, you should come check us out on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Mindgap Podcast. We live stream every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central, and we live stream that's for the podcast. And Saturdays we host a video game stream at 8 p.m. Central as well. Unfortunately, the big plans we had for last Saturday did not come through. We were going to do what the dub. <laughs> with a mighty c2 uh but she had a last minute schedule conflict so uh we had to change gears real fast and i forget that easter is a holiday and that i guess a lot of people do stuff for easter it's a thing i mean it's a day i wouldn't say it says nothing to me as saint patrick's day um so it's more to you than saint patrick's day but less to you than halloween yeah, I think that's fair. I think that math adds up. Um, but Where it's does Arbor Day fall in that. Probably around range. the same. Same. It's probably below St. Patrick's Day, unfortunately. Arbor Day's below St. I don't Patrick's even know Day? what it is. Oh man! So that's why I'm like, and with Easter, it's I just changes every year, and I just don't celebrate it. So it's it's to me when you know, this year was more of an Easter, like relevancy because my neighbors invited me over for brunch which was awesome um Ooh, you brunched they said come on over for brunch and i made some new cookies which were great i made a chocolate uh, chunk and homemade toffee cookies it was Ooh. fantastic delicious okay. um and we had to go through the awkward thing my neighbors are super cool they're religious but you wouldn't know it because they don't you know throw it in your face and right. i they're noticed cool they're very cool and as we were getting food i noticed that like People, you know, they invited their families over and stuff like that. I noticed that people weren't eating. I'm like, oh, okay, so we got to do this thing. So I'm just sort of sitting there. And Natalie's just, oh, oh. I'm like, I'm not going to tell her to stop. I mean, why Why be like, no, don't eat. Why? Yeah. I don't have time to explain this to you. But right. uh, people are going to do a thing that, uh, you know, we don't practice. So just hang in there. She just started eating. And then all of a sudden, they did a real quick prayer. Like, it was so fast. It almost seems like yeah. it's like the Micro Machines guy, which I really respected. And they did, they did, they did the whole side of the cross. And I did, I just, I went like that, just out of, I don't know why I don't practice it, yeah. but I kind of went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, why did I do that? I'm not, I don't practice this. And it was real like quick. Just, <laughs> just, I'm just, I started doing push ups while they do it. You're you doing know? Vogue, yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm going to work out. <laughs> 
Um, that's always my favorite when I'm when I'm around because my uh, most of my family, most sides of my family uh, are still uh, some sort of practicing uh, either Catholic or Baptist or whatever. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not. And, you know, that's we're not. Uh, and so it's it's always I'm always waiting for the people who are super far to that side in my family to when we do grace or when something happens and I don't participate in the sign of the cross. I'm constantly waiting to get called out on it. Mm -hmm. And thankfully it's never happened. Everyone just kind of goes about their day. Um, but it just, I, I do have that feeling of like, all right, hold your ground. You're going to be on guard now. It's the weirdest. It's the weird. It may, it's the weirdest social interaction. That's the most comfortable I've felt in a long time because, um, like I said, my neighbors are really cool. Like they're very respectful of us. We're very respectful of them. So like, I really appreciate I was like, whatever, it's totally fine. I'm going to respect them in their house. Like, it's totally cool Absolutely, and everything. Yeah. So there's other times, like, when you walk into a church, and I'm just like, I don't belong here. This is very weird. I don't know what to do or what to say. And there's weird paintings on the wall that make me want to make jokes. There's a statue of a half-naked guy. Like, this is weird. This is weird. It's like, don't go to the back room. Can't go back there. That's off limits. It's just, I don't know, man. Everything about it's weird. But anyway, all that to say, it didn't work out this weekend. Like, I, I I had a great brunch, but Saturday night, uh, a lot of people were out doing stuff for Easter. So, uh, unfortunately, I had to cancel the stream. Um, but we will have C2 back on. We're going to reschedule. We're going to have fun. Uh, I did dink around a little bit with Gary's Mod doing some Prop Hunter with a couple of folks, which was really cool. I watched um, a bit of that, and it was very entertaining. Yeah, so our goal is to hopefully gather enough uh, Mind Gap folks to uh, play a, a round of Prop Hunt uh, this this coming weekend. So nice. that being said, getting back to it, back to business, if you want to be a part of something like that, join us on our Discord. Head to the link down in the description of this video on YouTube and click the Join the Discord uh, button right there. Join us. If you don't know what Prop Hunt is, well, guess what? We'll show you how to do it. All right. It's going to be really fun. Essentially, the conceit of it is you pretend to be an object on the map and you're hiding. And then there's someone or multiple people that are hunters and they try to find you and you can move around and you can change into different things. It's a real hoot. It's really fun and it's silly. And it was really great. We had a lot of fun trying a bunch of different stuff. So it was really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. So looking forward to that. Um, if you're looking to support this podcast, you can do it in a couple of ways. Number one, check out our Patreon patreon.com slash mind gap podcast sign up for a tier we'd appreciate anything you could contribute to the show secondly if you're like i don't know man a monthly commitment that's kind of a lot doug maybe i'll just take some merch great we have merch available at redbubble i almost said merch bubble that's not correct redbubble.com type in mind gap podcast all one word in the search box and you will find our merch which is great buy something nice for yourself easter just was here get yourself a belated easter present I don't know. Mother's Look, Day's coming up. I was just say a few few weeks till Mother's Day. You know, pick yourself up. I will haunt your butt shirt. I mean, I'm sure that's great for all mothers everywhere. You know, mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, buy whatever you want from there. That's great. And if you're like Doug, times are tough. Finances. Ah oh, man, tax taxes just came. Tax day was just here, and I owed. Man, I don't, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm not getting a refund. Well, cool. Just head over to YouTube.com/slash/MindGapPodcast and just hit like, hit subscribe. And just hang out with us. Watch watch our content. That's free. That doesn't cost yeah. you a dime. Costs you a little bit of time. But hey, it doesn't cost you anything. And it, it's, it's super fucking helpful for us. So you know what you get in return? Hmm. Entertainment. Get entertainment. Hopefully. Yeah. Ideally, you do. Yeah. And uh, speaking of Patreon, I want to shout out our patrons. Uh, big shout oh. out to Mr. Wolf's Lore. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to Tom McIntyre. Shout mm -hmm. out to Richie Armour. Mm. Shout out to Zenny. Meow oh. to you, Zenny. Uh, shout out to Slotty Bartfast and mm -hmm. of course the almighty crit. Thank you for your patronage. We love you. We appreciate your support. It means the world to us. And that has been housekeeping. That, as they say, is that scene and scene. Housekeeping is done. It's extinct, much like dinosaurs are extinct. Yeah, man. Dinosaurs are extinct because uh, I had a great... We, we, we're, do, we're, we're doing a, a, every Friday's movie night at my house. At least it has been the last several weeks. And uh, 
Natalie is super into dinosaurs right now. And I was like, well, what can we watch? And it was a toss up between Godzilla, um, the, the, the one with Matthew Broderick, obviously. No, absolutely not. I was going through, I was like, what's available? I was going through HBO Max. I was like, what's about to leave? It's like Godzilla. I'm like, oh, we could do that. But I was like, you know what? Natalie probably won't like that one because it'll probably be pretty boring for a little bit and also be kind of scary for it. It won't be very enjoyable. So I was like, apparently the whole Jurassic Park trilogy is on there. I was like, I guess guess we could do The Lost World. I haven't seen that in a while. I was like, let's fire this shit up. And um, got to tell you, that is not a good movie. (laughs) <laughs> that is it is way worse than I remember it being. I remember being entertained. I yeah. went to go see it in the theater. I'm like, ah, this is cool. Uh, I was watching this time. I'm like, this movie is not good. Well, I watched the trailer because uh, that's the only commitment I wanted to make for this conversation. And uh, I was surprised at how many people were in it. Yeah, right. Did not realize like the cast was pretty stacked. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's Vaughn, Julianne Moore. Uh, what is it? Uh, the Juggernaut? The Juggernaut. Vince something, right? Or no, that's Vince. Fun. Hold on. <laughs> uh, the Juggernaut X Men first. There we go. Vinny, what's his name? Vinny Jones. The hell part did he play? Um, Vinny Jones. <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> the Lost World, I think, is what you mean. Anyway. <laughs> I'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to sit in fucking silence until I figure this out. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is it is. It's definitely a movie that fails to capture the magic of its predecessor. Um I feel like it relies heavily on some of the uh, spoiler alert. He was not in it. Sorry. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Vinny Jones was in snatch and gone in 60 seconds. Thank you. Metronome. Thank you. Didn't see that. Yes. Metronome. I was going to yell at Doug, but yes, you're allowed to say that. (laughs) Like, fuck you, Doug. Um, I know what he was in, Doug. I know what he's in. Thank you. Metronome. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was just it re- relied heavily on some of the same old stuff. It re- kind of reminded me of like Jaws two, right? Which, by the way, I love Jaws two, very fun movie. But it does not have the same. It does not have the same magic as the first one. And um, there's a one there's one particular scene that really irked me, that made me realize how much this wasn't a Jurassic Park movie. Um, so spoilers for this film, if you're worried about it um there's a part where um jeff goldblum julianne moore and two other guys are whatever the 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 conceit of the movie is there is a second island of dinosaurs where they were bred to be then shipped over to jurassic park well this second island has kind of been left to ruin since Jurassic Park went tits up and so the uh, dinosaurs are just there they're roaming there's no whatever it's it's just they are what they are and John Hammond the guy who was the leader of of this organization organization iGen is getting sort of muscled out of the organization by his nephew and they're looking to use those animals and profit off of them and John Hammond wants to, he turned into a naturalist he wants to save the dinosaurs so he sends out a small group of people to take photos to try and prevent this from happening well this group our heroes are there they find another group of people that are hunting the dinosaurs trying to capture them to bring them back to San Diego where they have an actual place where they're going to present them to everyone else and kind of bring it back to whatever it is so while all these guys are hunting these animals and whatever, um, the heroes sort of sabotage their camp and they had captured a baby T-Rex and they took the baby T-Rex back to the place to trying to, you know, mend it because they heard it and everything like that. Well, in the process, two T-Rexes, not one, two T-Rexes attack their trailer because they want to get their baby. And this trailer gets pushed over this clip and it's hanging off of this cliff and I swear to God we spend eight minutes eight minutes I don't know nine minutes of intense 
horror, not at dinosaurs, Justin. Yeah. Not at velociraptors, not the Dilophosaurus spitting goo or anything like that. No, fighting gravity. Gravity was the one thing that these poor people were fighting against because it was two trailers connected and one half of them is hanging over and the, the window busts open and they're like trying to climb their way back out and there's a guy up there trying to hook up the Jeep and trying to pull him up. But mm -hmm. then there's mud because it's raining and then like this thing breaks and then they're like, oh, they're falling down again. And then they're still trying to climb out and he's trying to attach this thing and there's, he's trying to hit it in reverse. And, and then the T-Rexes show up again. They eat the guy. And then it's just like I'm sitting there going, why, why is this whole sequence is just about gravity? Like, you know what they say about gravity? Yeah. Gravity is time's assassin. Well, here's gravity. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was Fair just enough. a perfect, and it's funny because Jill had never seen, she kind of just was reading a book and she looked up and she looked back at me. She goes, this movie's terrible. I'm like, yeah, it's not great. She's like, are we still in this RV that's hanging over the She was ledge? just casually watching I from time to time. Chapters. She's like, what, th what is this? I'm like, I don't know. It's just, it was, it wasn't good. And of course it culminates with they're bringing the T-Rex and its baby back to San Diego and somehow, which they edit out a weird thing because the T-Rex gets trapped. Uh, or at least they put it in a holding pen, but the yep. boat just sort of crashes into the harbor and everyone's okay. dead. And they've always been like on the boat. On the boat. Everyone's been murdered, eaten. Okay. And you're like, well, how do they get eaten? Because the T-Rex is in the holding area. And right. you learn later, like in a deleted scene that somehow raptors got on the boat and, and killed the crew. Did the lock? Oh, I thought maybe raptors <laughs> picked the lock and let the T-Rex out. No, no. But it's like, well, we're. I, it's just weird that everyone was dead and we're just supposed to accept yeah. that like well what killed them <laughs> we don't know you don't care because what you want to see is a t-rex roaming the streets of san diego like right. <laughs> so at the end of the movie did they when dress park three comes about are dinosaurs running loose or do they do they contain things at the end of this one at the end of this one they they get the t-rex and its baby back into the boat they take it back to the second island they send them back there they're like these animals just need to be on their own they don't need our help they don't need our interference let them be yeah that's that's all it was that's how okay. it ended um it ends with the message is yeah. what i'm hearing natalie got really scared at certain points and in one particular thing which i feel really bad about because i realized as it was happening i was amazed at how much i remembered these scenes i was like god damn it yeah. why is this taking up real estate in my brain god damn it Right, but there's a part where the dinosaur, the T Rex, it breaks loose and it goes to a pool at a house and starts drinking water because it's thirsty because it's been heavily tranquilized or whatever. And there's a dog that's at a dog house that starts barking at the T Rex, and this boy goes into his mom's parent, mom and dad room. And he goes, "There's a dinosaur in the backyard," and they're like, "Oh, again, this kid is 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 blah 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 blah." And like they go and they just see like this T Rex like sit up and it's got a dog chain connected to its mouth connected oh, to a, no. a dog house. And it's just like this. And uh oh, and shit. Natalie goes, Oh, it ain't the dog. And I was like, No, no, it didn't. She's like, but <laughs> how did you explain that she away? Because it was connected to the dog house. And I go, yeah, I go, but it's not real. I go, none of this is, remember, I go, because when she gets scared, I always have to remind her, I go, none of this is real. And she goes, she, sometimes she goes, it's not real, Natalie. It's not real. And she'll just kind of she talk to her. She telling herself this? Yeah. She's like, it was her it's, mantra, huh? All it's right. It's not real. I go, it, honey, I go, this isn't real. A dog didn't die. Like, it's totally fine. <laughs> right. I go, did you see the dog? No, nobody saw the dog. It just had the chain in its mouth. It's like, it's fine. It's totally cool. And she, we got her through it. But she was like, yeah. a part of it was like, she understands the situation. Yeah. Zenny's like, fuck that. Fuck that yeah. movie. I hate that part so bad. So, <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate that the T-Rex eats the dog. Because you also, T-Rex eats a lot of people. Like, listen, right. I understand white animals are going to eat, but they couldn't be eating that much. I mean, that was a lot of meals that they had on people. Like in these movies, like these animals just eat nonstop. And I'm like, I don't think that's how that works. They would eat. They would probably capture something, eat, eat them, and then they would be full. And then they would probably just go about the regular business. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I feel like if you look at some animals, like how much like they eat their like twice their body weight and whatever. Like some some carnivores eat a tremendous amount. So that's fair. I have to assume 
you know, I'd have to assume that people aren't, you know, we're not like grapes, Doug. We're not that dense. How so dare you? We, don't, we are we don't eighty percent water, Justin. I understand that, Doug, but the T Rex is just going to pee that right out. Well, I'm also like going back because there's a point where raptors attack like twenty yeah. guys, right? And there's okay. like f- three or four raptors that kill like all of them. Just kill them or eat them? Well, they're killing them, but you know, because that's one of the differentiating things in Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. You know, in that movie, they create the Indominus Rex. Mm-hmm. And there's a very point where it's like you see a bunch of dead dinosaurs, and uh, Owen, the you know, played by Chris Pratt, goes, "She's killing for sport," and that was like a big deal because they're like dinosaurs don't do that because most animals right. don't kill for sport, right? So I would lead me to believe that these Velociraptors, you know, they would probably kill their pack hunters, right? It'd be like yeah. lions, like they go, they they kill something, right, and they would eat it. But they wouldn't be like, and then get that guy, and then get that yeah. guy, and then get that guy, you know? Unless they felt like they were cornered. Like maybe the, the They were not cornered. They were not they cornered. they felt threatened, and they were like, we no. need to neutralize this threat, which is humanity. No. I'm just the, saying. No. Also, that dog was an asshole. It had a couple. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. You Zenny, don't know he doesn't that mean dog, that. He doesn't mean that, That Zenny. dog was racist, all right? <laughs> that that. T-Rex did us all a favor. Crit says, Daniel says raptors are territorial. They are territorial. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Yes. They were yes, in the raptor Daniel. country. Yes, they were. But they slaughtered those guys. Like they, they, the way the raptors were just like, oh boy, oh boy, we're in oh raptor boy. raptor country now. Right. They were like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We go get them. We go get them. And they were just falling like this, like left and right. They were just getting just murked by these raptors. It was yeah. crazy. Zinni says, I hope a dog poops in your shoes, Justin. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm not going to sit here and defend a racist dog, Zinni. If you want to, that's on you. It wasn't Just San saying. Diego. You know, we know what they say about San Diego mm-hmm. dogs, you know. Racist. <laughs> Facts. Look it up. Yep. Uh, long story short, uh, I'm not. Consistently cut in line when it was waiting <laughs> at the grocery store. You on my block now, boys, says the raptor. <laughs> that's right, Crit. That's right. Oh, Zenny says he was a good boy. You don't know. You didn't see the dossier. Only thing I'm saying is that I'm not telling Natalie. Spielberg has an entire. Look it up online. Spielberg has an entire backstory on just that dog. And it is gross. Like it is like that dog led a terrible life. Yeah. The moral here is I'm not telling Natalie there's a Jurassic Park three. So we're not doing that. All right. You're not quite there yet. I don't think any dogs die. I just don't want to watch that. I remember even in that movie, I, I, I Practical Doug, a part of him was born that day when I watched that movie in the theaters. I remember not even really looking forward to going. I don't know why I went, but I went. And yeah. I was just like, nah, I don't believe this. Not for a second yeah. do I believe this. It's bullshit. Um, I don't believe this. So, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I'm hoping... Um, yeah, I'm hoping to watch something else. But I, I did I do enjoy watching these movies with her. It is fun, yeah. just the movie experience. And tonight we watched Black Panther, and I've never been more annoyed with her because she asked questions like every two minutes. I'm like, girl, you've seen this movie. Why are you asking right. me questions? Like, this is absurd. Right. Whenever she sees like an adult and a younger person, she's like, Is that their dad? Is that the mom? I'm like, she no. She immediately assumes they're related. Yeah. It's it's especially I explained to her in Black Panther, you know, who Forrest Whitaker plays because we yep. go to the flashback and she even made the connection. She goes, is that the guy that was in the purple shirt? I go, yes, it was. That is the guy. So nice. then when Killmonger and Forrest Whitaker's character are there and, and T'Challa's, you know, challenging him or they're they're fighting and she's, you know, he gets killed. Like Killmonger kills Forrest Whitaker. Spoiler alert. Yep. Um, she goes, oh, was that his new dad? I'm like, No. We just talked about this. We just talked about this. And she started going like really into into details. Like there's an off joke about something. And she's like, what do they mean by that? What are they talking about? I go, stop, stop it. It's not important. I'm not going to explain it to you. It was a sarcastic throwaway joke. I was like, you're getting on my nerves. I love you, but God damn it. <laughs> this is why I don't go to the theater, Natalie. This is why I don't go to the theater. Well, she told me tonight at bedtime. She goes, because I, she, she, she literally goes, "What are you talking about tonight for the podcast?" I was like, "Well, yeah. you know, we're going to talk about Jurassic World." I go, "Hopefully, we're going to talk about the Thor movie." 
She goes, when's that movie come out? I go, July. She's like, oh, I want to go see it now. I'm like, well, me too. I go, July will be here before you know it. I go, Doctor Strange is coming out before that. I go, but I don't know. I go, I'm going to go see that one first. That one might be too scary for you. And she goes, mm, I want to go to the movie theater. And I never get to go. I'm like, we'll go. How many times has she been to the movie theater in total? Uh, her first movie was How to Train Your Dragon 3. And she went to see Frozen 2. And I feel like she's seen Toy Story 4. So three, at least three, possibly four. Three movies in six years. Yeah. To, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our yeah, first movie was when she was three. We took her yeah. right when she turned three to How to Train Your Dragon 3. And that was a really cool experience. So you said she did well with that one. Did very well. I was, I was kind of yeah. like, I don't know how she's going to handle this. You know, dark theater, large screen, loud noises. Right. But she loved it. She thought it was great. Yeah. It was also, there's a lot of leeway with those movies because it's a kid's movie. You know, yeah. so if kids talk or whatever, like there's it pits parents, their parents are like, we fucking get it. You know, get it. Yeah. I don't want to take her to a Jurassic Park movie and have her be like Aah! the whole time, you know, like, just like chill. That she, yeah. yeah, It's like, yeah. just chill. Just chill. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that yet. So I don't want her to go watch Doctor Strange and be like, Dad, what's that? Who's that right. guy? I'm like, listen, if you haven't seen Loki and you haven't seen WandaVision, shut the fuck up. You know, Dad, why is Patrick Stewart here? Who is that guy? Is that his dad? Why do you know Patrick Stewart? <laughs> is that his dad? Right. No, it's not his dad. He's like, I know Jean-Luc Picard. I'll be like, get out of here. We're done. We're done. Oh, Natalie? God damn it. So anyway. God, speaking of Thor. <laughs> or should uh, I say. You know, if I had prepared properly, I would have. Uh, I would have gotten that. That, se- that 0.7 second sound drop. That's right. At but long last. So deal with it. At long last, the Thor Love and Thunder teaser trailer has landed as of recording this was yesterday. <laughs> and uh, it was everything I hoped it would be. Yes. I mean, the internet almost tore itself asunder. Um, uh-oh. Do you still have me? Yeah, I've got you. Okay. Do you not have you? No, I do, but... That my my uh, is the heat getting hot on that computer uh, of yours? It, it's look the 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 heat is has leveled. It is what it is, but the computer is really starting to. It's it's talking back to me now. All right, it's not happy. If you lose me, I shall return as quick as possible. You might have to close some tabs, Justin. <laughs> nope, won't do it. <laughs> won't Moving do on. it. Um, yeah, no, the internet almost tore itself uh, completely apart waiting for this fucking trailer to come up. For for this days. Because, was- like, I want to say three, four, five consecutive days, Thor Love and Thunder was trending yeah. on, on Twitter. And every time I'd go check the hashtag and people would be like, why is this trending if there's no fucking teaser? Like, people were so goddamn <laughs> mad. And the thing that I was so excited about is that this was, it was on the high side, but it was a teaser. I don't feel like this was a full trailer. This was, it was dangerously close. I think a minute 30 is as long as you can go. That is pushing the boundary of a teaser, but it is that I would say still in teaser range. So I'm, I'm happy they didn't release a three minute teaser. Oh, for sure. Um, I, uh, I, I, I kind of had to laugh just because people are like doing a countdown like to, until this movie comes out. They're like, we're 95 days. 95 days until this movie comes out. Still no fucking trailer. Like the, the sense of entitlement that people yeah. had oh, yeah. to be like, we are owed this. And there was this, I think I talked about it uh, last episode, but there was a, apparently they're already doing press for it. There was like a, a shot of um, Taika, Watiti, uh, Chris Hemsworth, and again, I forget, Tessa... Is it Tess Thompson? Is that her name? Yes. Who plays Valkyrie? And they were... <laughs> Jill. Jill has entered the chat. If anyone has any HR questions, by all now, now's the time to enter in the chat. Uh, Jill says, it's all uh, it's all I needed. I don't even need a trailer. I'm in. Me too. I'm the same way. I was like, I'm going to go see this movie. Like, I will bet you that Taika does everything in his power to not release anything else. Like, I'm sure he is lobbying hard to not have a full trailer get released. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like something he would do. It's so funny because there was this press photo of like Taika, like what was it? They were all holding it, doing something like someone was like doing like two piece signs, 
right. or whatever that one was waving and they're like they people are like oh, that says like 4 18 22 that means right. that means it's uh that's what's when the or 4 11 22 that's when the the trailer is going to be dropping and then it didn't happen and i was just like you guys need to fucking chill out stop right. it these, stop these it. are the same people that go frame by frame and break down you know like what's what's in the trailer because Dude, out of a minute 30 trailer, like hours after it was posted, there was I was on YouTube and there was 10 minute plus breakdowns of the trailer. And I'm like, how are you making a fucking 10 minute breakdown out of a goddamn one minute and 30 second trailer? I'll tell you, because 10 minutes apparently is the algorithm, what the algorithm loves these days. So that's what people try to do. You're right. Yes. But it's ridiculous. Oh, it's (laughs) absurd. I, yeah. th- again, like this goes back to a, a pet peeve of mine, which is people who overanalyze everything. Like I saw something yes! the other day. I love, was it comic book resources or what CBR, whatever that comic book website is. I like it. I think it's great. Um, but they had this quick, like it was a uh, YouTube short where it's like, was Moon Knight referenced in Civil War? And I'm like, were they? And it was such a such a reach. It was something about oh, okay. how. They mentioned Cairo when there was the bombing, and they're like, a representative from Cairo, and they're like, we know that Moon Knight's associated with Cairo, so... I was like, Jesus Christ, you fucking nerds. No. (laughs) And we don't say that lightly, because we are of the nerd, uh, you know, we are are nerdkin, but uh, fuck you. (laughs) Just, Just... Fuck you. That's the one... That's one one bad thing about everything being connected is everyone. This is like about as bad as flat earthers or QAnon is people <laughs> find connections in everything. It's like just right. chill out. Absolutely. Like take it easy. Absolutely. Just it just just the reach on that sort of stuff. I was like, I don't even know if Moon Knight was you know a twinkle in Feige's eye at that point. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to be too dismissive of it, but to have it be like, you know what we'll do? We'll reference him. You know. Well, the Civil War, think about how many years prior that, like, I, that's, that would have been, if they had shit planned out that far, I, did Disney even know it was doing Disney Plus at that time? Like, were they, were they looking at series at that time? I feel like that's a big fucking stretch. I mean, I'm sure they were probably floating around different ideas for what yeah. could possi- possibly be there, but I, I mean, because, you know, because, or maybe it was also Winter Soldier, right? No, that's what it was. It was Winter Soldier, because when, uh, um, the guy was like listing off. He was, he was describing the algorithm. He's like, he mentioned specifically Dr. Stephen Strange. He's like, Oh, right, right, right. A, a TV journalist in, in Cairo, or he, he throws out something like that. It was like, was that Moon Knight? It's like, Jesus Christ. Like, <clears throat> right. So even, even less likely on the Winter Soldier. Yeah. It was just like, <clears throat> yeah, no, just yeah. chill out. Like, just calm down. But in uh, in general, I th- I thought uh, I thought the trailer was fantastic. It had it had, you know, the the DNA of Taika all over it. Like that was that felt like a a Taika Thor movie. Um, it was irreverent. It was fun. Super fucking colorful. Uh, lighthearted. Very much unlike the second Thor movie. <laughs> it, like you could not have had a more opposite. The antithesis of Thor two. Uh, would would be this movie coming out? Um, what's up? Wolf Lord goes. Welcome to the Mind Gap Podcast, where we do a breakdown of Tuesday's episode at thirty eight twenty one. Did Doug and Justin just give a hint to the next week's episode? Find out now. <laughs> Fuck you. Welcome Wolf. to the Mind Gap Mind Gap Podcast. <laughs> I love it. Where we do a deep dive uh-huh. into everything. Yep. Love you, Wolf. You beautiful bastard. <laughs> uh, I agree with you one hundred percent, man. It, yeah, it, it was just. All over, it was great. It was, it's, 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 it was so fantastic because honestly, that was like a perfect teaser. I like, honestly, yeah. I don't, I don't, don't need. A, I didn't need a trailer. I didn't need a teaser. I definitely don't need to see anything else. I, people, of course, these entitled little bitch babies were like, oh, but what about Christian Bale? Right. He's supposed to be playing the villain. We didn't even get to see. I'm like, listen here, you piece of shit. You get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. Even my six-year-old daughter knows that, all right? You take it, you like it, you know? Just enjoy it. I appreciated that there was a, there was barely a hint of conflict in it at all. Something about that was remarkable to me. It was literally yeah. about, I love the tagline of, like, some gods don't have a plan, or not all gods have a plan. I was like, right. this is amazing. You know, you have a it nice... Look like, 
it, like it, it was a traveler, like a, almost like a um, a road trip movie. Like yeah, it was. It's literally just Thor on a. He's gonna walk around and figure himself out. That's yeah. really what it feels like. Right a part now. of me realized I should hate this because he was such a hippie. You know, he's like he's just sitting there being like, I need to figure myself out. But I loved it. I loved the quips with Star Lord and Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, there's some great comedy in there. It's yeah. awesome. And Jill goes, if you're not worried about Christian Bale, then no one needs to be. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. She just says, you love some CB. You're goddamn right. You know, cock and balls all day, all night. Doug is a, a Christian Bale. Uh, Christian Bale simp is what uh, he, he loves him. Some Christian Bale. That's right. I'd let him scream at me for walking in his eyeline on set. <laughs> Which, by the way, I think he gets a bad rap on that situation. I think I think that was that was um, that was really out of context. I think it was really out of context. That whole thing where he did really? Terminator Salvation, uh, allegedly, from what I've read as well, he had had a conversation with that guy earlier, like one or two times earlier, about not walking in his eyeline. <laughs> Okay. And the guy did it again, and then he yeah. finally lost his shit. And he's like, God damn it. We talked about this. Stop walking in my eye line. Slotty goes, if you freeze it at 222106, you can see the sweat on Doug's brow from the shape of an M. This is clearly a nod to Mephisto. <laughs> the amount of Mephisto, people just have a boner for Mephisto and all this shit, man. They want Mephisto to be there, you know? <laughs> What? Uh, why? Why is everyone so hard up from Mephisto? It all started in WandaVision. People thought okay. the bad guy in WandaVision oh, was Mephisto. Book, right? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. like, oh, it's Mephisto. Yeah. Mephisto's behind it. It was in Loki. People thought it was Mephisto, so it became like an ongoing yeah. joke that Mephisto is behind everything. So, <laughs> which is hilarious. Mephisto, Mephisto was my my Thanos. <laughs> Mephisto was my Thanos. Um. But I, 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 I thought it was great. I'm thoroughly looking forward to the movie. I don't think it needs another trailer. I don't either. I again, I, I truly do, and I. This could just be me making up. You know, this is my own fan, fan theory, fan fiction. I truly feel like Taika was like, ah, we're gonna hold on. <laughs> we're we're just gonna like maybe he somehow negotiated. Uh, you know, uh, a little bit of authority in when what. What was released when with with Marvel in his in his package deal? And he was like, eh, we're going to hold on. And the louder the Internet screamed, the more he was like, oh, another week. Fuck you. You know, well, you know, it, it worried me a little bit because it made me think there might be delays. There might be problems behind the scenes. Um, yeah. There might, you know, maybe something's not going well. But at the same time, I was also like. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I, I I was also like, could they also just be like, fuck you guys. You're, you're going to come here. We know you're going to yep. come here, right? I, I think that I feel like that's Taika's style where he's just, you know, he he pushes that up. I mean, I'll say this. It making an executive decision here, Doug. Mm -hmm. We're moving up a segment. Oh, Got the questions, we got the answers. All you do is ask. Practical, 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 practical. ask practical Doug. Do not be alarmed. We're not that far into the show quite yet, but I just felt like based off of a new Ask Practical Doug question that was submitted by one of our wonderful, lovely super fans, it felt like the right time to pull this out. So I'm all for it. If you've never been here before, Practical Doug is a tiny little Doug that lives inside Big Doug and helps guide Big Doug through all of life's uh, chasms, if you will. Quandaries, quagmires. Um, you can ask Practical Doug uh, live if you join us on Tuesdays when we uh, live stream this. You can join the Discord. You can ask him there on social media, hashtag Ask Practical Doug. But you can ask Practical Doug anything that your heart desires. And this one comes all the way from the other side of the world. Our main man from Australia, Jared, asks, Doug, is Marvel a big enough powerhouse now that they could release a film without a trailer? 
let people go to the cinemas with no, that's the movie theaters, with no preconceived <laughs> idea? Has Marvel proved their worth or are trailers still necessary? This is very apropos to what we're talking about. That's a really good question, Jared. Thank you for asking. Um, I would say the practical side of me is no. As as successful as Marvel is, I don't think they can ignore that the marketing machine, the marketing monster has to be fed because mm-hmm. while Marvel has a huge brand and has a huge stamp on most things, they still have to remind people what's right. going on. Case in point, my wife. My wife had no idea this movie was coming out. And I, I really wish I actually would have filmed what Natalie and her watching because as, as the you know Guns and Roses came on, Natalie starts doing this dance that she does, <laughs> where she's just like just sort of awkwardly moves her, her elbows and stuff. It's yeah. really it's very cute. And then um, at the end, you know the the big reveal of the trailer. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it is uh, Mjolnir is pieced together. It's cobbled together. And it comes into the hands of Jane Austen as she's wielding Mjolnir and Thor's like, huh? And Jill's like, who's that? Mighty Thor. I was like, that's Jane Austen. She's like, what? I was like, yes. And then we had a huge argument about how it didn't look like Natalie Portman, that she thought it looked more like uh, uh, Kate Blanchett. And we... Answer me an honest question. When you said that's Jane Austen, did Jill say, did Jill think you were talking about the novelist? Did I say Jane Austen just now? I think you did. I probably did. Jane Foster is what I meant, not Jane Austen. Okay. I was like, <laughs> I meant Jane Foster. Thank you for calling me out on that. I think if we go back to the tape, I'm sure I said Jane Austen. It just felt. I was like, mm, maybe it isn't. I, mean, I thought maybe I was wrong. So I'm just yeah. like, well, maybe Jill got like a super like like, like I got a book boner. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, Jill, Jill goes, it doesn't look like Natalie Portman. It's not the arms. She beat me to it. It's the arms. You're distracted by her buff arms. Um, I will say people do look different in masks though. Like yeah, if you look that's what at I said. Like Robert Pattinson, uh, anyone who's worn a Batman call, like it, it changes. It just, you, you're not used to seeing someone's just chin jutting out. So, yeah, right. And of course, yeah, she's, she's probably been working out like a fiend trying to get in shape for this. Uh, in Thor shape, if you will. Uh, you know what? I'm going to bet she used the center app. You know, I'm sure she probably Chris did. Hemsworth, like, I got some people that can hook you up I'm on this. Comp you. I'm going to comp you one year, but then you've got to pay like. <laughs> but after else. that, you got to, right. you know, uh, we got you covered. All right. Right. I'm, look, I'm a business person. I'm trying to make money here. I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman yeah. doing business as a businessman, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jill doesn't read Jane Austen either. Interesting. Good for you. And she agrees yeah. with you. That what? Yes. That when you wear a helmet, people look different. Yeah, that's what I said. I she's like, she's like it doesn't look like Natalie Portman. Like, yeah, cause she's wearing a helmet. <laughs> right. Like when case in point, when John Cena puts on the Peacemaker helmet, right? Totally he looks different. like Michael Sarah. Yeah, right? it's completely different. It like he shorter, thinner. It's very weird. Just like you know, Clark Kent expertly takes off his glasses. <laughs> he turns into someone else. You know. <laughs> You know, I'm cool, Doug. I know. Now I'm practical, Doug. To- two different people, you know? Right. Ta-da. <laughs> I don't need your mansplaining. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from the dude who didn't realize I haven't been wearing my original wedding ring. You're married? <laughs> Doug, are you married? <laughs> I don't want to talk Who's about your- it. Oh, okay. I don't want to talk about it. I lost my wedding <laughs> ring, everybody. I lost my wedding ring because I'm a fucking idiot, all right? fucking idiot and i'm really Uh, upset at myself because i mean actually you know when you're trying when your dream is to be the worst spouse of the year hmm. you gotta you gotta go above and beyond and you know the start to that is losing the symbol of your relationship to the person you love (laughs) because when you work out it hurts when you wear it you know when you're too busy pumping that iron it digs into the palm of your hand and you decide to put it in your pocket and then you get home and you think everything's cool and then it's not in your pocket and you don't know where it is. So, you know. You saying Clark Kent reminded me of, <laughs> reminded me, I was trying to search the conversation. I cannot remember if it came up on here, bully, uh, then let me know. But uh, 
someone had brought up the uh, the 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 idea of what if um, what if yeah screw it we'll come back to it I can't I can't put I can't put it together as well as it needs to be put together because it's a really cool thing fuck it so Doug uh, trailers you say Marvel cannot get away from them they need I, to feed the marketing machine I think they do I, I yeah. for what it's worth like Doctor Strange has been pumping out just a ton like of extra trailers recently it's like guys just stop like quit it like you don't need to do that right um i would love to see them do that i would love to see them do just teasers like this that's it yeah but at the end of the day again people like you and me justin most of the people that listen to this podcast like we're in the know we know what's happening but there's people out there that have no idea that thor love and thunder is coming out and they have no idea what it's about absolutely so for for what it's worth Again, when Haig went and saw uh, Infinity War, he didn't realize that Endgame was coming out. He yeah. walked out of Infinity War. He's like, that's it? And so people do. And and in fairness, Haig is pretty plugged in. He does keep himself up on, on stuff. So even he, people need it. People absolutely do need it. Now, I think Marvel has gotten to a point where they can do something like this, where they could delay the release of it. Because in doing that, it got it trending. It might yeah. have been a low key, super, super good marketing tactic. I mean, people were clamoring for this movie and have been for some time. So yeah. it doesn't need the marketing push, but you're right. I mean, people have been, that was trending and there was nothing right. they even put out. I mean, that has right. got to be a PR slash marketing wet dream, right? That's yeah, got to be, absolutely. people are talking about this without us even talking about it. Like we're not right. responding. We're not doing anything. People, of course, are blaming Kevin Feige for everything. They're like, that son of a bitch. The people are making memes. They're like, this right. is exactly what we want. We you want people to want us. <laughs> that fucking asshole. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so the, the practical dog answer to that is it is needed, unfortunately. Um, but I would like to see them be more creative with what they're doing. And they, Marvel has taken a lot of chances with things. I like them mm -hmm. to see it take a little, take some chances with their marketing, you know, with what they're doing. And this is, I think, a good step. Okay. Now, if that. come, you know, May into June and July, we get three more tra trailers, I'm going to be pretty pissed um, because I'm like, I don't need it. I won't watch them. I, I'm making a vow right now. I won't watch the other ones. I don't need to see it. I'm in it to win it. Like, let's go. Um, if they are doing the God Butcher route i'm already sold i love that comic book storyline and i'm in it like let's do it i can't wait yeah. I, don't, I don't need to see anything else i'm definitely taking the jared approach here which is don't show him anything else just bring me that movie i'll be there man i'll be there to see it and i'm good to go um i would like to be more like that where jared just pretty much just, just like decides he's gonna see a movie and doesn't watch anything for it and just loves to be surprised I yeah. have to get a glimpse of something. I have to. I'm just too curious. Like I want to know. But this to me, I did. I I was really good with Endgame. I watched the teaser for Endgame, and I was like, no more. Yeah. Now it's probably the worst one to do that on because they didn't show you shit about that movie anyway in any other trailers because like fuck you guys. Like you're gonna come see this one. So yeah. Anything we show you is gonna be in the first ten minutes. So <laughs> you know. If you're invested up to this point, you're coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, literally. I, I made a vow that I was going to try to be more like Jared. And I was like, I'm phase four. I'm not going to watch any. Tra and I immediately broke that because I'm just a trailer hog. For some of them, I, I do kind of need it. Like I needed to see what Doctor Strange was going to yeah. look because I was so intrigued about the tone of it. Because okay. they're like, this is kind of going to be like a horror film. And, you yeah. know, Sam Raimi's directing it. I was like, OK, what's up? Show me what we're working with here. You know, right. like and t I again. I, I'm in it. Like I'm I don't need to see anything else. You know, whatever else they've released, I'm like, I don't need to see any more footage. I'm good. Like I'm 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 sold. I'm in it. I would I'm gonna need to see some sort of trailer for the next Ant Man movie. I, I will need to see something for that. Uh -huh. Black Panther. Is that? Are we filming that? I don't remember when it's coming out. Okay. I used to know these release schedules like the back of my hand, but I don't anymore. But yeah. Ant Man Quantum Mania. Twenty twenty three apparently is when it's coming out. Okay. Because they've got, they were supposed to, have, they're having three come out this year, right? It's uh, Doctor, Doctor Strange, Thor, and Marvel movie. Movies upcoming. 
Uh, it's not uh, Guardians, is it? Uh, Black Panther, awesome. apparently. Wakanda Forever. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. It's coming November. November. In November. <laughs> Metro, okay, Metro yeah, goes yeah. Morbius 2. Ah, yes. The the one we no one understood that we needed. Right. <laughs> ah, again, that movie. That poor, poor movie. <laughs> what do we got? Let's see. Yeah, Miss Marvel's coming out in June. And then July, Thor comes out. Black Panther is in November. Then The Marvels, February 17th. Guardians 3 in May. Ant-Man in July of next year. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Uh, is interesting. a movie called The Marvels? I think it's a streaming series. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Because Miss Marvel is going to be a streaming series too. I'm actually interested in that one. I'm very Interesting. And that's dealing with Carol Danvers and Kamala Khan, which is Miss Marvel. Wait, The Marvels is? Yeah. Like putting them together. That's Interesting. Cool. That'll be cool. That's very cool. Yeah. I like Jill that goes, I don't have to know about trailers because Doug has that covered. I remind him about his family members' birthdays. That's what's good. This is how a relationship, a healthy relationship works. Exactly. You guys help each other. We help each other in the yes. best ways possible. So, and speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, Disney is releasing a new Guardians of the Galaxy uh, roller coaster. Oh, interesting. But God damn it, it's coming out like a month after uh, we're going to be there. So <laughs> fuck, we're just going to miss it. Which, by the way, uh, ha- announcement, forgot to do this up top. Uh, there will be no podcast next week. So because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going on vacation, I'm going to Disney World, y'all. Boop, 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 boop. So, are they doing the Guardians? Is that gonna, are they retrofitting the Tower of Terror? Because that's what they did on the, the brand West new one in Epcot, brand apparently. Okay. Yeah. That's so that's so weird. Isn't that weird? I know. It's such a weird place to put that. I think Epcot's giving one of the getting one of the biggest overhauls for just in general. Yeah. Like they're just they're adding stuff to it. The like Ratatouille crazy. ride was oh, almost done the last time I was down there. And I was like, ah, oh, this would be cool. This this would be a cool ride to see. We watched uh we've been watching videos with Natalie to get her prepared, like to see what yeah. um what like what's rides are there and we saw that we didn't even know it was a ride we're like what the fuck is this and it looks amazing it looks absolutely amazing so yeah. we're gonna be pumped to see that so but i like it. well if i'm not betraying you i'm sorry my friend you'll you'll be okay i promise i promise you i promise you like three together she goes if they change tower of terror i will boycott i will riot it's gotta happen eventually i'm just saying they've <laughs> gotta they will it's got to happen eventually. It does. You know, although the last time, again, the last time we were down there, it was like a two and a half hour wait for that fucking ride. So for Tower of Terror. Yeah, man. I don't understand it. Like, I people, don't understand what rides have the long waits. Like, you know, I understand things like that are popular, even though the, the rides suck. Like yeah. the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves Mine Train ride. That that ride sucks. Oh, another one. That one is one of the was one of the biggest letdowns. Um, okay. We actually waited an hour to ride on it, and I was like, "What the fuck are we doing? This is a shit ride. I don't, I don't, I don't know why this is such a big deal." And like, you know, uh, like I guess some of them are just are, are just classics mm-hmm. that people want to go. But like when when Small World has a long line, I'm like, "What are y'all doing?" Like, right. We used to right. ride that to be like, hey, you want to rest your feet for a little bit? Let's ride this we need ride. We out of the sun and we're going to rest our feet. Yeah. Yeah. Metro says in Paris, it's it's a small world ride. has the longest queue just for torture. <laughs> 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 yeah. Some of the rides just have like, yeah. they're brand new. Like I imagine the Star Wars shit's going to be long lines. I don't mind. The Avatar stuff, eat a dick. rough to get through, man. Yeah. Uh, to, or to, to to book rather it's yeah. uh that, that's are you going to try for that or no, try i mean i i need to go through and put a battle plan together as far as like you know we'll 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 talk cuz yeah. we got we we got in but it was the second round of reservations but yeah. Uh, yeah yeah it'll be i don't know it'll be tough uh, for some of that stuff but also i just realized today i took i measured how tall Natalie was she can ride every single ride except yeah. for Rock and roller coaster, which is a okay with me because I can't really ride that anymore and not feel sick, which makes me feel really old. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, the the motion sickness, it's a real thing. I when I was younger, I never understood why my mom would be like, "I'm getting motion sick." I'm like, How, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, I'll you know, I'll spin in circles for a fucking hour, and then we're like, but as I'm getting older, 
I'll be scrolling through my phone, just the, the doom scrolling on Instagram. And about after 15, 20 minutes of that, I legitimately feel nauseous. I'm like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta stop moving things in front of my eyes. You want to know, like, you want to know what's really bad. Mm. Hop on a swing set at a playground. Yeah. And go swinging. Really? Dude, that fucked me up. I had no, I hadn't been on a swing in forever. And like we took yeah. Nally to a playground. I got on it. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> I looked at Jill. I was like, are you feeling this? She goes, yeah. I'm like, why does this feel awful? Like just, I'm like, how long were you on the thing before you started? To feel I was just like, I was like going, it was just like the quick back yeah. and forth. I was like, Oh, Oh, I'm okay. Now I'm okay. Now. Like I'm, I, I'm prepared for it, but I hadn't done it so long. I was like, Oh God, this is making me sick to my stomach. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. I don't want this, but I checked it. Natalie's 45 and a half inches. Like she, the, go, most baby. of those are 44 inches. And so I'm like, I'm like, you can ride Space Mountain. You can do Expedition Everest. Right. She goes, I told her today, she goes, what's the one with the Yeti? I go, you want to ride Expedition Everest? She goes, yeah. I go, okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, listen. So you guys are going to go to Animal Kingdom? We're going to all of them, man. We're hitting all the parks. Oh, okay. I know you don't like the film. Have you been on the Pangea ride? No. The I, Avatar ride? No. I would strongly recommend doing that. I have never seen the film and won't out of principle because you hate it so much. Oh, this is, this that's is the nicest to... thing you've ever said to me. Dude. I, I trash that movie at every possible opportunity. And then Hag, usually it's around Hag, and he'll go, have you seen it yet? I go, no. And he goes, then you can't have an opinion. And I go, I can because Doug hates it. That's why, that's why we're together. That's why Just we're together. It, yeah. That's so, why my ring... Magically disappeared. That right there. So did mine. <gasps> um, no, I look. Uh, I understand that movie, but that that ride is really fucking cool. So if you guys get a chance to go in there, now the the line on it was sinfully long, but it was definitely a very very fun ride because you basically get on, you get on whatever those flying animals are. You get in one of those things and you can feel it like breathing between your legs and it's a, a VR. Th it's it's cool. So wait, I'm sorry. You said you feel it breathing that. between your legs. Oh, yeah. Like it like there's they've got like air pouches on the side. So it feels like the lungs are inflating. So it feels like you're sitting on the back of this thing as it's flying around. That's wild. It is. It's very, very wild. Wow. So. Um, yeah, I, that's that's part of the problem is that. That was such a weird addition to the park because one, they added it so much later than the movie. Right. Like it came out right. just so many years later. It's like, wait, why? Much why? like the sequels, no one was clamoring for it. Exactly. It's like, wait, why? Uh, and th that area of the park is super cool. But I remember, I think Jill and I got a fast pass for the Navi River Ride. Okay. And we took the fast pass. I mean, it was an hour and 20 minutes. It was like, no, it was, it was 120 minutes is what it was. We got on the fastest. We rode it. And I was like, you've got to be fucking shitting me. If I waited two hours to get on this piece of shit, I would be what, fucking livid. What was the river? What? Like, were you on the water? It's like, just like a boat. It was like Pirates of the Caribbean. You're on a boat. Oh, and it's oh. just the flora and fauna and creatures of the world. I was like, that was a terrible ride. <sighs> because again, what I'm weighing here is I'm like, how long? to get on here and is it worth the experience right like i'm willing to wait 60 minutes for tower of terror that's totally worth it to me the exhilaration the fun that you get from that totally worth it some of the classics haunted mansion i'll do 40 minutes all yeah. right i'll do that you can start getting to 50 and 60 i'm like nah i'm good like the ride's not worth it that much although right. with natalie i'll probably make some exceptions because i really want to experience everything with her I'm gonna say you're gonna be standing in some lines this time around. Unless oh, you for buy, sure. Unless you unless you throw down money, because now Bob Chapik is making you do that. Fuck yeah, him. Yeah, I might. Yeah. We'll see. But with because there's just so many rides, and I've shown her things like she's excited about Big Thunder Mountain. I told her about Space Mountain. She's excited about that. Like she nice. desperately wants to ride the dinosaur ride, at Animal Dude, Kingdom. She's gonna lose her fucking mind. I know. She is like she is at the pretty much the perfect age yeah just like 
to to just get lost in the magic of the place. Yeah, she's going to get that lost awesome. in the sauce. Like, And I, I think that's what I'm looking forward to the absolute well. most is just watching her experience this because this is going to be brand new. She went there when she was 18 months old, has no recollection of anything. Sure, and man. this now with her imagination and everything that she's seen, like this is going to be such a cool experience. And I told her, I go, listen, I'm going to challenge you to be brave because some of this stuff, I go, listen, you've ridden a roller coaster before, but that was at a carnival. All right. This is going to be a much more interesting roller coaster ride. So I want to yeah. challenge you to be brave because right now she's like, will you ride on it with me? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll ride on it with you. Yes. Yeah. Mom and this I will both ride on it with you. Like, for sure. We're going to be doing yeah. this. But Nope. Good luck, kid. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> but I was like, I'm going to challenge you. I go, this stuff is going to be... I go, first of all, it's all fake. So let's start there. None of it's real. They right. all they all are based on a story. Yep. You know, and it, the story isn't real. But, you know, mm -hmm. just, just know that it's all for fun and it's going to be totally fine. I go, but some of these things... like I go, Space Mountain, I go, it's in the dark. Like the idea right. is that you're going into space, so it's a roller coaster in the dark. You're going right, and it's in a vacuum, so you can't breathe the whole time. It's cold, and if you stay in there too long, you get radiation sickness and die. So good luck, but be brave. Be brave, little one. Um, be brave, little one. Yeah. So there's just there's so much stuff. I'm just excited for her to see. I wanted to go see the fireworks at Magic Kingdom. You know, just yeah, man. all sorts of stuff like that. Like, just I'm super just pumped every day i think is just going to be so much fun like i told her about the living seas we're going to go eat at the uh, the coral reef restaurant there so while we're eating dinner she can look at the shit flying around floating around in the you know in the aquarium yeah. and whatnot like just i just telling her stuff she's like whoa <laughs> like blowing her mind i'm like i can't wait i can't <laughs> wait it's gonna be so much fun and i th i think if i'm not mistaken they have the i think they've got the characters like back like characters are open to back up to hugging now oh that's so good. She can go and uh, get a hug from Mickey or Minnie. I'm wondering how into that she's going to be. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, don't, I think she's going to... My guess is, my prediction, she's going to be weirded out by it. Like, she'll be like, oh, that's cool. I'll be like, characters. I'll like, do you want to go say hi? She'll probably be like, uh-uh. Like, <laughs> that's Dad, my guess. that's a six-foot fucking rat. I don't <laughs> want to go up to that. My yeah, my guess is that she's gonna be a little. Uh, she'll be happy to look from a distance, but if we say, "Do you want to go do it?" She'll pull a classic Doug and be like, "No, I don't want to." Even though maybe deep down she does, but she'll probably sure, be yeah. kind of scared and it'll be like, it'll be fine. But my what will be really interesting is if she sees a princess, especially if she sees like she, Rapunzel's one of her favorites. I was gonna say which one? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Metro goes. I got hugged by Pluto when I was thirty, and I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, spice dude." Of life, man. That's a spice of life. I remember uh, it was. One of the ones Jill and I went to, and I think it was Donald Duck came by, and maybe it was with my mom. When I was a kid, I apparently really loved Donald Duck. And you know, there was a, a an old friend of yours, Justin, who at one point in time you must have mentioned that you like bacon, and ever since that point, they always got you bacon stuff. They were like, "Oh, yes. this is the guy yeah. that loves bacon forever." Mom's like, "You love Donald Duck." I'm like, "Okay, I did." But she sees, she goes, "Look, it's Donald Duck." I'm like, "Okay, like yes, at one point in my life, I like Donald Duck. I don't think about him ever." Right. It's not on my mind, but she's I like, don't black hey, ropes to Donald Duck. remember, remember yeah. it? I'm, okay, whatever. But anyway, so Donald Duck was there and it's like, hey, I went and shook their hand. And I realized like the hand was so small and dainty. I'm like, this is a lady in here. Like just, it was such a weird, I'm like, hey, Donald. And I was like, ooh, I don't know. This feels strange. I don't know. Put Something, her there, Donald. I was like, huh? yeah. yeah, as an adult where yeah. you're like, you know what's going on. It's kind of weird, yeah. you know? Yeah. And fortunately, most of the time, like th those folks are so good at acting that they roll with it really well and, and whatever. But oh, those characters sure. aren't supposed yeah. to talk. So they're just kind of mm -hmm. like, Hoo. that was fun. Yep. Oh, my Jill goes, <laughs> Dono. Because apparently I couldn't say Donald, so I'd say Dono. My mom, would, oh, my mom always yeah, tells a story. She's like, you used to say Dono. I'm like, yeah. Storms. Yep. Yep. That's Dono. Because I guarantee you, I'm also making this prediction. When I go there, she'll be like, did you get to see Dono? I'll be like, I don't know. All sure. Right. We have. We're recording that right now. Someone timestamp it, and then we need to come back and we need to make see if it actually happened. <laughs> Jill goes, "No one shakes their hand, though. That's where you went wrong. I mean, they put their hand out, so I put my hand out. What? Do you, I just I reciprocated. You, they put their hand out. You slap it away and you demand a hug. That's how. <laughs> that's how that transaction goes. You slap it away and then boop them in the crotch. Boop. Right. <laughs> and you push them into a trash can. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, bully, you bully them. Yeah, you slap their hand away and you bully them for trying to be nice to you. Oh, yeah. my God. The American way, man. 50 bucks if you go punch the waiter right now. And they're just like, <laughs> and they punch. <laughs> You're paying off the character to go do shit. I turn into my own personal fight club. Hey, Donald, I heard Jeannie was talking shit about you. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> like Jeannie the bartender? <laughs> they just go and they punch an actual person. They take their head off like, Jane! Fuck you, Jeannie! Fuck I told you you don't bring our personal shit here. I right. fucked you once, but that's it. Keep my wife's name. Out your motherfucking mouth! Oh, oh god, yeah. Oh my god. Speaking of Disney characters fighting each other, welcome to the throwdown. We made it. We did it. We we made it. What do we got here? Boy, this is an interesting combo. Wait a second. I feel like this was teased very early in the episode. <laughs> I suppose it was. Yeah. Blasting ropes. <laughs> All right. You got that drum roll ready? I do. I'm just I'm I'm sorry. I'm opening things and my computer is battling the CPU versus the amount of fucking ads that are popping up. Yeah, these, these websites are rough, man. They're so rough. They're so <laughs> ad heavy. This week's throwdown is Wario versus Earthworm Jim. What an interesting Very combo. Interesting. Yeah. Because first things gonna... first, Earthworm Jim has a fucking gun. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, yeah, Wario's got two guns. Boom, boom. Yeah, but... Look at I those. Mean... He's got those like chubby little Italian, like, I can lift a car arms. <laughs> yeah. I love Italians. I'm I love them. I love Italians. Um, Don't... Keep your keep your mail to yourselves. Um, well, I'll do Earthworm Jim because I used to play that game all the time when I was a kid. So yeah, you, I'm all uh, over that on on, uh, on EWJ over here. Um, okay, he's got the same catchphrase as me, Groovy. So he's right. three A. <clears throat> all right, so Wario. Um, here we go. Does Wario have a power up if Earthworm Jim gets his suit? Good question, Metro. Let's read through this and we'll decide as we go into it. So Wario, ooh, low stats over here. He's a 7C. Interesting. So, oh, that's rough, Wario. That's rough. Okay. Uh, plagued with diabetes due to his diet. Uh, he's got, <clears throat> excuse me, superhuman physical characteristics, underwater breathing, self-sustenance, fourth wall awareness, Vehicular mastery, acrobatics. I don't know about that. Can hmm. uh, create explosions by farting. I'm back into him, and we're back. Yep, and you have me again. Uh, I feel like I know. Soundboard's going to be used heavy in this throwdown. Um, can create quakes with a ground punch. Can create great shock waves simply by punching the ground. Uh, he can sometimes hurt ghosts. Possible genius level intellect. He can clone himself. See, th these things say type 2, type 1, type 3. Again, I don't diabetes. know if this is diabetes. Yeah. Or if this is, because they've got three different, they've got Wario, uh, Wario, Where Wario, and Wario Man. So, We're just doing Wario. <laughs> right, but like, they don't differentiate be between the three. Like anywhere where you see a pipe, like lifting strength, at least class 10, and then you see a pipe and it says class G. So I'm trying to figure out which one of these powers and abilities are his his base level. Let's just say all of them. Yeah. Hypnosis, mind control, electricity manipulation, energy manipulation, energy projection. He's just got a ton of stuff. Telekinesis, power absorption, resistance to diseases. Uh, cosmic radiations, black holes, attack potency, it's town level, uh, speed, he's massively hypersonic, lifting strength, he's capable of lifting and throwing uh, Dino Mighty, who is larger than an adult elephant, striking class is town class, durability is town level, he took hits from Shake King, whatever that means, stamina, very high, 
He's got uh, standard melee range. Uh, his equipment, several power up, several power ups. So he's got disguise rod, balloon suit, garlic, pots that give him hats with different powers, f uh, pow power flower, and Wario bike. And then he is again, he is a genius, as we've said here. Um, weakness, he's extremely greedy, and he sometimes lets his uh, his nature overtake him, uh, causing him to go out uh, out of control occasionally, even going so far as to double cross his friends. Wario Man's strength and speed normally changes every time he transforms, and he can be weaker than his normal self to a point where he's unable to break a toaster with his bare hands. A very interesting uh, example to give there. Because of his hot-headed and clumsy personality, Wario doesn't consistently use his intelligence to the fullest, as he's been easily tricked and hardly ever uses strategy. So interesting. He is a genius, but he's often outsmarted. That's good to know. Talk about EWJ over here. Well, Earthworm Jim, uh, this this might seem a bit lopsided in my opinion. Okay. So I actually just finally looked up the tiering system. Oh, like what these letters God. mean. Yeah. Um, Earthworm Jim is a 3A, which means he's a universe level, which means characters who can destroy all celestial bodies within a volume of at least equivalent to the observable universe via an omnidirectional explosion alternately create or significantly affect a universe of comparable size, which does not involve the destruction and or creation of space time. So essentially he's a universe level character. Whereas so that's wrong. Like we've been thinking like nine a is high. Nine a is low. One, like three. Is it the lower this is the like, number? Yeah. The lower the number, the more, the more powerful. I've been thinking about it the wrong way. Okay. And so a seven C is what we consider a uh, town level. Characters who can destroy a town or those who can easily harm characters with town level durability. Interesting. So okay. that by itself, Earthworm Jim yep. is incredibly more powerful. Um, oh. He has Tune Force, so that by itself is incredibly overpowered. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, all of this is contingent on the fact that he stays in his suit. His suit is what powers him to do all Got these it. things. Okay. His attack potency is universe level. So, recreate the universe by producing a big bang along with Psycro. Can damage enemies who, sh who should have comparable durability. Lightly hurt Rosebud who can destroy universes with his laser gun. So, Sly says, I mean, Wario has a 3C tier capability. Yeah, but we're not, do we're doing, not, that's, that's Wario Man. <laughs> or Wario where Wario. <laughs> Right? Striking strength, warm. universal Same. durability, universal level, um, stamina very high, range is universal. <laughs> He's got a bunch of equipment. His intelligence, he has four sentient brains and a PhD in aquatic animal communication, but otherwise his intelligence is low. <laughs> I mean, I feel like to to make this... I feel like to make this, we, we've got to do not just straight Wario. We've got to do like one of the C, the three C ones to make them on par with each other. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, Earthworm Jim trounces Wario. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah. He's, he's, he's got galactic striking strength and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, Wario in the, the three C tier is galactic strength, uh, striking level. He's class G lifting strength. Speed is massively... Fuck ton light. I don't know. Uh, FTL plus faster than light. Is, whatever. Galaxy level. Uh, none of this means anything. Um, ex he's still genius. So yeah, he he gets up. Uh, he gets up to the <laughs> same levels basically. So it goes. This is fascinating. You have no idea, Jill. Yeah. This is why you come here. All right. This is yeah. why. This is why you come to the the experts. Well, so again, we I'm going to say this much. Um, uh. Jim comes to the table with a massively powerful gun. All right. Okay. Now, Wario may have abilities, all right, depending on what flower pot he puts on his head, right? But <laughs> Earthworm Jim comes with a fucking ridiculous gun. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I, I mean, plus you got Toon Force in there. I, I, I think, you know... Knowledge be damned here. Intelligence be damned. Earthworm Jim is going to shoot. He's going to shoot hard, and Wario is going to cease to exist. I think that's how this is going to go. Um, 
Especially because his durability, universe level. Um, tanked a, he tanked a big bang, is what it says. I mean, a big bang happened, and he survived it. He tanked hits from Rosebud, who was said to be the strongest creature in all creation and was said to be able to destroy the entire universe numerous times and nearly did, and he took a hit from that that creature. I don't think Wario has that at his disposal. Well, he has power absorption. Most of his enemies' attacks end up giving him his forms. So, you know, he could absorb the big bang gun. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it does sound like Earthworm Jim is 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 way outpowered. Uh, away, or, or just outpowers Wario up and fucking down. It, yeah. Like, even if we put Wario's uh, 3C level... Uh, powers against Jim that Toon Force says a lot. I mean, I feel like the Toon Force is going to be a thing, but yeah, I feel like Earthworm Jim, if he's got a suit in his gun, which why wouldn't he, right? Like yeah. if he, if these two are just meeting on the street and they, they engage immediately in battle as they are, Earthworm Jim probably is going to have his suit in his gun on him. Agreed. Would be my guess. Probably doesn't travel without those. No, because otherwise he's just a so, worm. So yeah, exactly. Now you he get him out of out you, you, reins and he gets stepped on. Now you you uh, you step it. You get him out of that suit. He's fucked. But I don't think that's right. going to happen. So I'm not. Yeah. So I feel like we got to call it for. I also. I it. It. No, we're not yet. No, it's like that's good. Jill makes a good point. Wario is a schoolyard bully. You stand up to him and he shits his pants. Ah. Uh, I agree. Earthworm Jim is a goddamn hero. So you can't can't argue against that. That, the, the, that's facts, ladies winning. and gentlemen. Heroes be winning. Heroes be winning. Yeah. 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 Well, that was fun. That was excellent. Thank it you was. all for hanging out for that. Um, that's actually one of his attacks. <laughs> Eating his pants. The wall. <laughs> the Wario, the Wario waft. waft. Well, it's like Rafi always used to say. If they attack you, just shit your pants. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Metro, I did love the Earthworm Earthworm game. I did too, man. That was a weird fucking game. But I played that a lot growing up on the Super Nintendo. Uh, so, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? Uh, so, on Netflix, there is a... Uh, I was going to recommend uh, Jurassic uh, Park Lost World. Um, but there's the second one, right? <laughs> yeah. You usually okay, put Jurassic the- World, which was not the same movie. Yeah, well, I, again, none of this matters. Um <laughs> I'm going to recommend there's a a stand-up special on Netflix. Dave Chappelle produced it, and uh, it is one of – it's an old-school comedian who Dave, I think he was talking about, used to look up to, gave him a ride one time, kind of was was pivotal in shaping Dave's career. Earthquake is the comedian's name, and the name of the special is Legendary, and it's a half-hour special, and it's fucking hysterical. This guy's an old-school comic. He has the audience roaring – from the minute he steps on stage and he doesn't let up let up until he steps off stage. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful. It is very, very fucking funny. So I would strongly recommend checking out earthquake legendary on Netflix. I heard Tom Segura speaking very highly. Like earth earthquake is a very revered comic in the, in that world. And he said, uh, when I think when Tom was, doing shows earthquake was backstage and he said he, me and my other my opener we went we went back and kissed the ring like we yeah. we we paid due to you that guy just tell this guy has been around like for he's, he's been, been around for like 30 stuff. years doing comedy the thing that's unfortunate is that as revered as he is in the comedy circles i had never heard of him before so i feel like this is Chappelle's way of trying to be like hey world this is someone you should know you yeah. may not he may not have ever hit the level of where I am or where – and I, when I say hit that level of um, notoriety or, or name recognition of what Chappelle has or what Tom Segura or anyone else that's out there right now. But this is a guy that we grew up at idolizing, and so you need to know this person. I feel like yeah. this is his way of doing that, and it was such a fucking funny, such a funny uh, stand-up set. That's on my list. I was abs- – I've watched it twice, so uh, three times. I watched it. Then I the next day I was like, Beth, you got to watch this with me. And then Beth's dad came up and we showed it to him. And so every time I've laughed and every time I've showed it to someone, they've ended up laughing the entire time through. So definitely watch it. Tell me right. what do you got? I'm going to fucking do it. Um, I 
randomly i've uh i've actually been listening to spotify for like the first time in my life and nice. uh i i've been digging up some old bands that i used to really really love and i was trying to think i was listening to this band rufio which is one of my used to be one of my favorites and i was like i went to a show at gabe's oasis in iowa city and there was rufio and there was another band there and i was like god damn it what was their name and it literally popped in my head last night and nice. it's called the band's name is over it and their yeah. album timing is everything i listened to the shit out of that cd when i was in college and i went yeah. back and re-listened to it that shit holds up it is so good uh that i highly recommend it to it if you're looking for a particular song wrong way it's so good check it out it's okay. it's definitely punky sort of stuff but it's really really good Check out the album. The band's over it. Timing's everything. I don't think they're around anymore, but uh, it was really fun cracking that bad boy open and uh, going through it all again, which is awesome. And Metronome, I have not seen Hit Monkey. I did see a trailer for it, but I have not seen it. And Jill gets it. Rufio. Rufio. Oh, ha. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right, gang. Thanks so much for listening. As always, please be sure to check us out on all of our social medias at MindGap Podcast. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash MindGap Podcast. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to check us out live and be like the cool people like Slotty Bartfast, Jill, Metronome, Wolfslore, Zinni, all the cool people that hang out here, check us out Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Central Time. That's when we record the podcast live. Also, check us out on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central, where I host a live video game stream. This Saturday, God willing, if we get enough people, we're going to be doing a prop hunt game. It should be a real shit show. It's going to be real fun, real silly. Uh, hopefully, we get uh, the folks that we need to do it. So, check us out on all our social medias, and don't forget to check out Justin as well. On Instagram and Twitter, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm... Check us out on all the places where you can find and consume quality podcasts and uh, leave us a review, rate, review. All those things that we ask you to do means a ton to us. And then 2East8th.com and keep an eye on all of 2East8th's medias, social medias and medias, whatever. All the medias, you sons of bitches. All the medias. All right, gang. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And remember, no podcast next week. So keep it in your pants until then. Be safe. You know, if you have any questions, need asked, answered, you know, check us out on our social medias. We'll get back to you. All right. It'll be cool. Uh, so we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Go find Jill on social media and ask her all your questions. Yeah. Especially if it's HR related, you know, yes, that'll be good. Absolutely. Uh, but she's legally obligated to answer all of those. <laughs> I think that's HR code. Uh, but until next time, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Chat, thank you. Listeners, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.